Music is difficult to read, but I can help it make more sense. In five minutes, you'll be able to read any note because you'll understand how the staff and musical alphabet work. We start with a single line. This line represents a pitch, and today that pitch is C. Or if you have a higher voice, it would be C. Go ahead and sing one of those notes with me. Ready, go. C. Good. Now if I put a short note on that line, then we would sing it as C. Try that. Ready, go. C. And if I put four of them in a row, how would we sing that? Try it. Ready, go. C, 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 C. Good. Now if I put a note above that line, then that's going to represent a higher sound, which we're going to call D. Sing that with me. Ready, go. D. And if we have three of those in a row. Ready, go. D, D, D. Very good. Try to sing this pattern. Follow the notes left to right as you sing them. Ready, go. C, C, D, D, C. Very good. Now, if I want to go higher, I'm going to have to draw another line. And I'm going to call that line E. Go ahead and sing that note. Ready, go. E. And try to sing this. It starts back on C. Ready, go. C, D, E, E, E. Doing great. Now, let's discuss the musical alphabet. You all learned the alphabet song in kindergarten, right? Sing it with me. It goes like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 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 Okay? It just does those same letters over and over. And that's the pattern notes follow as we go up the staff. Speaking of which, music is generally drawn on five lines, and we call those lines the staff. Say that with me in three, two, one. Staff. And if I told you that the bottom line of that staff was C, then the space right above it would be D. And the line right above that would be E. And then it would be F, then G. After G, it goes back to A. And it just keeps following the musical alphabet. Now, when we get to the top of the staff, we can keep going. We just have to draw extra lines. But we can keep going forever following this pattern. Let's practice this a little bit. If I told you that this space was C, what note would be the line right above it? That would be D, the next letter. If I told you that this line was E, what note would be right above it? And that's F, the next letter. If I told you that this line was G, what note would be right above it? That would be A, because A is the letter of the alphabet after G. Now it gets a little trickier when we start skipping notes. I've put C in the bottom space, and I want to know what the note in the next space up is, but I've skipped a note in the middle. There's a note that would be on the line in between these two notes. So the line would be the next letter, which is D, and the space would be the next letter, which is E. So this note would be E. If I told you that line was D, what note would be the top line? Think about it. The space is E, the line is F. If I told you the top line was F, what note would be on the line above the staff? The space is G, the line is A. Now let's revisit briefly our musical alphabet, because this alphabet can be sung forwards or backwards. Try to sing it with me backwards, starting on G. G F E D C B A G F E D C B A G F E D C B A G F E D C B A G F E D C B A G F E D C B A. That's the pattern notes will follow anytime we're going down. So if I told you the top space of this staff was C, then the note below that, the line below that, would be B. Then the space below that would be A. The line below that is G because G comes before A in the alphabet and so forth. And again, when we get to the bottom, we can keep going, we just have to draw extra lines. So let's do a little practice with this. If I told you this line was C, then the note below that is B, the letter before it in the alphabet. If I told you this space was A, then the line below that is G, because G comes before A. If I told you this line was F, then the note below that is... it's E. Now, as we've been practicing, I keep saying, if this line was this note, or if this space was this note, and we've been jumping around randomly. That's because in this video, I've just been focused on helping you understand how the staff works. But fortunately, when we actually read music, the notes on each line or space are consistent. All we need is a fancy symbol like this called a clef, which defines one note, and we can figure everything out from there. So to help you practice, 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 I have a video dedicated to each of the treble and bass clefs. 
The treble clef is used for the right hand of the piano and a lot of higher instruments like violin and flute, while the bass clef is used for the left hand of the piano and a lot of lower instruments like trombone and cello. So pick what makes sense for you, and I'll see you there.